how are you? Chef Rob. Fall is right here, so we are going to start using some of our squash. That is really good. Butternut squash. Love butternut squash. So we're going to make a butternut squash and beef stew, and it's going to have some sun-dried tomatoes in it. A little different than the typical stew. Uh, it takes about an hour, or you can use the crock pot. So what I want to do is put some olive oil into this pan right here. Just want to get it nice and hot. And then I am going to take one onion and I'm just going to chop it up pretty small. Start sauteing it. You always want, and then I'm going to add some garlic as well, but you always want to add the onion first because if the garlic hits the oil first and it is too hot, it could start really toasting it and maybe even like burning it a little bit. So I'm just taking these little ends off of the onions. Like that. A, a good Spanish onion is very good for a stew. If you don't like it as strong, of course you can use a Vidalia onion. I'm just going to cut this in half. Just going about three quarters of the way through. And then I just turn it like that and just give it a good chop. Always be careful you don't get your fingers. Keep moving that knife back. Every time you go down one, you move your hand back one. And I'll do this one as well. The oil should be getting nice and hot. I'm doing that over a medium heat. And a rough chop right there. Just want to feel. Okay, I can tell when I put this in, it's going to give it a nice sizzle. There's that sizzle. Sometimes just put your hand over it. You can just tell if you drop it in there, it's going to be good. And now I want to put in some fresh garlic. I'm going to put in about two cloves worth. Just chop that up. Always use fresh garlic. Not that, um, that much. Just two cloves. So let's let that cook. We're going to let this saute for a couple minutes. Get the onions nice and soft. The onions always give it a good base and will give it a nice sweetness. So onions and garlic in a stew is always fantastic. So I want to add some fresh thyme leaves to this. About a tablespoon of the fresh thyme. Just take that off just like that. To do a couple branches. Gives it a nice earthy taste to this. And then make sure you chop it up nice and small. Okay, I'm just going to do one more. The first time in a stew is always really, really good. Take this off. And you can make this stew all year long, especially the fall, winter, into the spring. Really, really good. Okay, we're going to take this, we're going to add this in with the onions, make sure you stir that around good. Remember this is over about a medium heat here, and now I want to take some fresh rosemary, about one tablespoon as well. And we're just going to take these leaves right off of the branch as well, and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a rough chop. If you're not a thyme fan or a rosemary, you don't have to put it in. But if you like it, make sure you put it in and put in the fresh. Fresh is always best. Okay. So this will take about two minutes to saute to get these onions nice and soft. Now while they are cooking, I am going to take some rump roast right here and you can have your butcher cut it up or they sell it already done, you know, into little cubes. I'm just going to take a couple tablespoons of flour and I just want to coat the outside of the meat. 
going to add some salt and pepper as well. What the salt will do is it'll bring out that real meat flavor in it, okay? And I just want to coat the outside of it. I don't need any extra flour at all, but I do want to see that the outside of it gets coated. Okay? So if you need one more tablespoon, that is fine. Perfect. And you should have nice cubes just like this. Okay, I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this now. Maybe just a little bit more, a little more than a pinch. And then some fresh ground black pepper. So you can season this meat really, really well. Let's check on our onions getting soft, but just maybe about 30 more seconds to this. I'll just scrape along the sides here as well. Now, I'm going to be putting in some cubed fresh butternut squash. Use it about a pound, a little over a pound. We're going to substitute the butternut squash for the potato in the stew. You know how there's always potato in the stew? The butternut squash for the fall and just gives it a nice flavor. Butternut squash, one of my favorites. Okay, time to add our beef in here. And then we're going to turn up the heat. We're going to get almost like a nice brown on the outside of the beef. And then we'll add in our butternut squash. Just going to let that cook on a very high temperature. While that is cooking, you want to get your next ingredients ready. And some of the other ingredients I'm going to add is the sun-dried tomatoes. So I have about a quarter cup right here. Sun-dried tomatoes, you can buy these already packed in the oil. Get those uh, sun-dried tomatoes. It's the best for this because they are really nice and soft already. So I'm just going to take the sun-dried tomatoes. I'm going to put it right on this cutting board right here. And then I want to cut these into small pieces. This will add a really nice and different flavor to the beef stew. You can dry your own sun-dried tomatoes. You can take a plum tomato and you can put it in an oven with a little salt and pepper and you can put it in on a 200 degree uh, pan but you have to leave it for about 10 hours. So I suggest you just go buy the sun-dried tomatoes because you don't want your stove on for about 10 hours, do you? Okay, so you can see that nice chop that I have here for the sun-dried tomatoes. Get everything off and we'll just leave this on the side so it is ready. Okay, I'm getting that onion all coated around the meat, but I still want to get a nice little sear on the bottom of it. Just like that. It's on a medium high heat right now. As soon as it gets brown, I'm going to add in my sun dried tomatoes and the rest of the ingredients, and then we simmer it for about an hour until that meat is nice and tender. If you have a crock pot, it will work perfect for this. Okay. One of the Instapots, it will work great in this as well. You just want the beef to be a nice golden brown. And then what you want to do is kind of see how it sticks to the bottom a little bit. Just get some of those little sticky, uh, crusty from the meat and the flour, you want to get that and bring that into the, uh, the beef and that will just give it some, so much more stronger flavor. Go. Okay, just get anything from the bottom, kind of get that into the mixture here. And now the meat is nice and brown. I want to take about a pound of the butternut squash a little more, a little less would be fine. It just means how many you are serving and do you want more vegetable or do you want more meat in your stew? 
you can add carrots to this, so you could change this around. Mushrooms would be fine in it as well. So we're gonna let that cook. Let's put in our sun-dried tomatoes now. If you like stewed tomatoes instead of the sun-dried tomatoes, that would work fine. Just gonna sprinkle these all over in here. Make sure you get them all. You can probably see that it has a nice color to it and that it's gonna be very tasty. Now I want to add my Marsala wine to this. The Marsala wine, never buy the one that's in the supermarket. It's just really, really sweet, okay? Go to the liquor store, just buy a bottle of medium quality, it'd be fine. So you want about a cup of the Marsala wine. It's really reasonable. A bottle like this is about $5, so not bad at all. And you'll get many meals out of it. That's the end of that bottle. And now I'll finish off about a cup's worth. Okay, perfect. Put this cap on so we don't spill that. Just gonna give this a good stir. And now to finish it off, what I wanna do is I wanna put some beef broth in here. And I want the beef broth to kinda just about cover this, okay? So, you can make your own with a little chicken bouillon and some water, or you can go to the supermarket and you can buy the boxed one. Okay, there's so many different brands out there. Pretty much they're all good. You get a good quality one. Now let's just pour this beef broth in here. Like I said, we're just gonna pretty much cover the beef. That looks good. Put that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this to a boil. And then when this comes to a boil, I'm going to simmer it. We're going to put our cover on here and come back in an hour. So our stew has just come to the boiling point. So we're just going to reduce this down and just put a cover on it. Let it simmer for about an hour and it should be coating the meat really nicely and it also the meat should be nice and tender too. For anybody that's watching my cooking programs on YouTube, you can also go to my Facebook page, it's Simply Creative Chef Rob Scott, and you can watch me do the live classes uh, all over pretty much the country now. Okay, so thank you so much, and because uh, we're, we're doing this in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we're doing this in Boston, Massachusetts, Sarasota, Florida, um, Connecticut, we're doing it, and all the way up to Niagara Falls, and of course Long Island where I come from and where I've been doing it for about nine years. So let's look at this in one hour. So our butternut squash and beef stew has simmered for about an hour and the meat is so tender. Let's take a look inside here. This is just packed with flavor. Now if you could see it has a little thickness to the sauce but also doesn't coat the spoon. So if you like it a little thicker, which I do, you can always take a couple tablespoons of flour and the same amount of water so about three tablespoons of flour three tablespoons of water whisk this around really good put a dot of salt in it just a pinch and that will take out any lumps in your sauce you could do this with butter which would be called a roux but if you're trying to save on calories, you can just add a little bit of water. Whenever you add it to a mixture like this, you must make sure that it is at the boiling point. Otherwise, you can add a lot of this and it will never get thick. So we're just going to gradually add some. And then you will see that it will get a nice thickness to it. Again, you could always add carrots to this, some stewed tomatoes. And it would come out really good. So about three tablespoons for this is absolutely perfect. Everybody's consistency of how you like it is always a little different. It's almost like a little brown type of gravy right now. You can taste it for salt as well. If 
you need to put in a little more beef broth or a little bit of kosher salt, you could do that too, because salt will just bring out the flavor. So this is done. I am going to turn this off and I'm just going to ladle it into a nice bowl just like this. Okay, let's finish it off with some fresh Italian parsley just to garnish it on top. And then this served over some either egg noodles is perfect, some buttered egg noodles, always good. Uh, but you do have the butternut squash in here, so that is kind of your starch. Sprinkle it on there just like that. You can serve it with a nice crusty bread because it's always really good to dip it into. So I'm just going to take a couple pieces. This is a beautiful ciabatta bread. And this is ready to be enjoyed. So everybody, thank you for always coming to my classes. And I hope you will try this one for your family. And enjoy the fall and into the Thanksgiving season. Will you make me?